A sarcastic humanoid duck is pulled from his home world to Earth, where he must stop an alien invasion with the help of a nerdy scientist and a struggling female rock singer. The first Marvel movie, Howard the Duck, is on Inside Movies right now. Hey guys, uh, welcome to Inside Movies. Um, uh, today I'm joined by uh, GMB Komichuk, a uh, writer, illustrator, all around good dude, uh, Spencer Estrebrooks, a uh, filmmaker, comic book maker, beard wielder, and, uh, and novelist Andrew Buckley. Thanks so much for being on the show, guys. Thanks for having us. Why not? So yeah, let's Pleasure get into it. We're, we're talking Howard the Duck. This is like the first Marvel movie that I can think of. And uh, I hadn't seen it in a long, long time, and we rewatched it for uh, for this review. And uh, what did you guys think about it? What was what was the good of uh, of Howard the Duck? Okay, a film like this, you have to dig deep, George. You have to dig deep for good things. And I like to play a game with my genre films. I like to play a game where I imagine the characters that I see, the actors who are playing small parts in movies that go on to have larger parts in other movies, I imagine that their characters are the same character at different points in time. So come with me, if you will, and imagine that Tim Robbins' character from Howard the Duck, he's playing the same character in Tom Cruise's War of the Worlds. That that is okay. his character's origin story is the plucky scientist who is afraid of alien invasions in Howard the Duck grows up into the crazed maniac in the basement of War of the Worlds. So that's one good thing you can imagine, Tim Robbins. Uh, after that film, it's amazing he ever worked again. Quick question. <laughs> Does that mean Howard the Duck is still alive when War of the Worlds is going on? It's a great else? question. Great question. Okay. Yeah, he's there somewhere. Duck. Right, I, I like or he's in Maybe it's because What's of that? Howard the Duck that Water Worlds happens. Maybe that's the whole reason. Maybe they're looking for Howard the Duck. Right? Yeah, that's got to be one of the good things. These are good things that you can find in the movie Howard the Duck. And I think it's important that we dwell on only these good things. I think I think what else is good when you really look at the Howard the Duck and his and his personal story, like the transformation, right? Like he's a duck and a man, kind of, but he's like he kind of has to go on a journey to be get in touch with his inner duck again and fly. And there's a great scene where he learns to fly and goes back to his duck like instincts. I think that is a transformational, the man beast reversal into beast man mode and he emerges uh, a flying duck scaring duck hunters it's great it's really inspiring i, I almost cried watching him uh with tim tim, Rob tim, Robinson, tim robbins and that uh yeah as they you know that tim robbins apocryphally tim robbins and leah thompson had to fly the plane themselves in that scene that's badass that's, that's cool. like Tom cruise badass <laughs> you guys go really deep i think you guys are I don't know. I found the movie, the first 30 minutes of it, I was entertained. Like, I'm not going to say it's good, George, but come on. I, it held my attention. I was right there. I liked the Duck Homeworld. I liked his apartment was pretty cool with, like, the uh, Raiders of the Lost Stork poster and all the kind in of... Defense, in defense of Howard the Duck, the production team that made all those props and filled out the Duck world with duck puns of every variety. Um, I mean, you could take a gander at a lot of them. There was, <laughs> they had done such a great job on that part. Guaranteed. That's a good part of this movie. That's I good. like the duck puns. I'm, I don't know. Maybe I'm a sucker. You know, I'm a dad. <laughs> I was, you know, um, I, I was feeling it like the mallard card and the just, I don't know. It was, it was terrible, but it was funny. And, and the um, CGI monsters at the end, I love. Or not CGI, the stop motion. Pardon me, the stop motion. That's the part. I want to just, I want to, I want to confess something to all of you gentlemen. 
I was convinced that I would love this movie like I did when I saw it as a young child. I was sure that I would revisit this and it would be a joy that I would turn it on and be like, ooh, that part, ooh, that part. But instead, I'm saving a lot for our bad. I'm saving a lot for our bad, right? I also like anything that you liked. I liked Howard the Duck, like like the little, like he's a little, like I, his performance was great. I thought I was a fully believable duck in my opinion. Do we know who they had performing as Howard the Duck? Because he didn't seem like a little person. Like he wasn't. He was. He wasn't yeah. very stocky though. He well, seemed, they, seemed a bit longer. They you had know? eight. They had eight different people playing Howard the Duck, and at one point it was supposed to be a child who was supposed to be in it, but they couldn't get the performance, so it ended up being the one guy who was actually in the credits, who was in the costume most of the time in the end, because and, and it was a small, it was a small person who did it. Because that was the like Lucas connection. Well, he's worked with lots of uh, little people, and um, so he had, he had the hook. He got a small like person. Him. Also, and he went on to do such movies as Child's Play, doing the Chucky stunt double, uh, Spaceballs, playing yeah. Dick, and Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? The Little Man. Nice. Wow, that's crazy. Or, you a, know. A storied history. Yeah. Interesting. I like uh, Leia Thompson. I liked her. Uh, um, I, I wrote, uh, Leah Thompson really sold it for me because I truly believe that she wanted to fuck Howard at that one point in the bedroom. <laughs> that's what uh, was the thing to sell. The, the, the hair boner? Come on, dude. That was so <laughs> funny. I don't know. It was amazing how many sexual references were in this movie for a PG-13 that I did not remember as a... when I watched Yeah, it was teenager. ridiculous. It was ridiculous. Yeah, I think it's rated PG. Yeah, yeah, I would not show it to my kids. No, me either. No. They're yeah. full on the duck, duck moves. Moves. Yeah, yeah. Those were really not even the, It's not even the memories that that was. It was the, uh, it was the way in which there was just all this sexual predation going on by everyone in the cast, off camera, around cam, like every. No, that you, you know. know in my head because I saw it a long time ago. I thought rewatching it, I would be more offended, but it wasn't that offensive. Like it was pretty, it was pretty tame. It was very lewd, and very suggestive, but I don't think they really I crossed it. Like, Revenge of the Nerds cross lines, you know, with like roofing people and like doing really <laughs> yeah, the weird rapey section. Yeah, I mean, the, uh, they, they did a um, downplay. It was really heavily downplayed. Apparently, the script, the original script for Howard the Duck, was apparently way worse, and then they uh, they dialed it back because they wanted it to be more kid friendly. But they kept duck nipples. So I mean, I love the duck, duck nipples duck are funny nipples because, like, he's friendly. he's looking in the magazine. Like, there was no consistency. To yeah, that's it. true. That's true. True. There was. Are <laughs> we in the bad section now? No, I'm still, still in the good. good. Our duck yeah, nipples not good. Feel like <laughs> not, not a good. <laughs> I want to talk a little bit more about Leia Thompson. I I liked her performance. I thought that, like, yeah, she was kind of winking at the camera, but not too much. I thought that she was still um, believable, honest. Um, I, I appreciated her performance, her her energy. Um, I think I think she was probably the best actor in the movie. <laughs> you know, as far as like you know, not going too far. What about Jeffrey Jones, who was the? Yeah, he was great with his like. He's not he was amazing. Yeah. I wrote down Jeffrey Jones playing what I, like I imagine is Jeffrey Jones when he's hangry. Right? Yeah, yeah Jeffrey Jones. Awesome. The whole time. But he played his. I thought it was funny, like uh, Howard's relationship with uh, Leah Thompson's uh, Beverly, um, you know, and how he like wants to be like her manager and he threatens to like give like his current manager. Like he's like got like an ice pick and he's like going to give him ice rabies. To me, that was. I don't know. Like the thing is, is like this movie. I think the biggest problem with it. Let's all right. Let's just get into the bad. Cause fuck, I can't. I can't stall anymore. The bad, um, is the rating right? It's it's a PG movie, and it really should have been like rated R kind of hard comedy. If they're gonna have like these kind of themes, really go for it and try and make it funny. And yeah, that was it, it's it's trying to 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 stand in like two lanes, and it's. And it really needed to pick one. Either it's a family-friendly movie that's about a duck adventure, or it's about this crude, lewd, you know, 
duck that's having sex with people and cursing and fighting and you know and and is just completely insane it, but it, it tries to to be in both be both things and it, it just fails i wrote in my notes and underlined who is this movie for because it was shown to me as a child but it wasn't for me as a child there's no way i liked it as a child not so much as an adult i thought it was fun i thought it was like like for my like i'm like a little risque a little like you know, jump started me into puberty. I'm just saying, duck boobs. Um, <laughs> so this movie was for Spencer as yeah. a child. <laughs> so this yeah, is your going back emotional. to it now. I'm like, I'm like, you know, like again, I like I thought the first 30 minutes was fun, but then I realized it's an hour and 50 minutes. I'm like, oh, for fuck's sake, there's too much going on here. Uh, this is going to be, uh, yeah, the story beats yeah, were the flying fun. section. You're the right. flying section was so long. I mean, I only mentioned it as a wonderful transition into his character. Yeah, yeah. It was so long. It went on forever. For anyone watching this video who wants to see us talk or lament about other flying scenes in movies that go on for too long, see our Superman 78 video. Um, <laughs> just a little plug for our other video there. Another scene that flies for far too long. Um, I I think movies are a dream for me, and I just I fly in my dreams, and I want to fly in the movies, and I think they should be longer. Just make a whole movie about flying. Could happen in the sky. Oh yeah, Sky Captain in the World of Tomorrow. They did that. Never mind. Go on. Can I make an observation, an ironic observation? It's not that ironic. So you haven't mentioned that this first Marvel movie that ever got produced, the first Marvel movie that ever got really made by George Lucas right, was executive producer, was supposed to be animated, it turns out. This I found out by just doing some Googling. It was supposed to originally be animated, but there was a contractual obligation for Lucas to deliver a live action movie to his distributors. So he pushed for Howard the Duck to not be a cartoon, but to be live action. So that gave us Howard the Duck. But in 1982, four years before this movie was made, uh, Steve Gerber and Jack Kirby launched Destroyer Duck which was a comic that they uh, produced to raise money for their lawsuit because Steve Gerber claimed that he owned Howard the Duck and Marvel wouldn't give it back. And the plot of Destroyer Duck was the Destroyer Duck trying to track down this lost other duck, which they allude is Howard, who is being, and I quote, uh, exploited and destroyed by a thoughtless corporation. And then four years later, they really stick it to Steve Gerber and they make Howard the Duck the movie to just like double down on. Not only do you get nothing, but we're going to make your character into a failing movie franchise. <laughs> well, what's really crazy about this movie, too, is like it cost George Lucas so much money that he lost the, his ownership stake in what would become Pixar. Um, is which, that true? I didn't know that. Yeah. It is true, but the, you can almost thank Howard the Duck for us having Pixar now because Steve Jobs bailed him out, basically. He's the one that bought the CGI division for Lucasfilm because they just built Skywalker Ranch, which was this like $50 million project, and Howard the Duck was supposed to push them back into profit, and it did the exact opposite. So Jobs bailed him out, bought the CGI division of Lucasfilm, which became Pixar. So Howard the Duck gave us Pixar. So as insult to injury to Steve Gerber, Howard the Duck saved a giant faceless corporate entity in the end. Um, one thing that I think is bad about this movie just in general is that there is no character arc for like Howard really. Um, I don't think so. I don't think so. He <laughs> tries to follow up. his dream. Don't you remember? He gave up on his dream. And then at the end, he's singing a song. And they can fly. Yeah, exactly. Right, it's got some nice Back to the Future kind of reference, even though I think this was before <laughs> Back to the Future. Maybe Back to the Future was kind of referencing this, but Where Back to no Back really to the Future came first because Leah Thompson was in Back to the Future. Yeah. Um, what really was weird to me though was like his priority isn't to get home; his priority is to get a job at like a, ho a hot tub brothel. To like pay rent, I don't like. Why is he trying to like find a way back to his planet? Like that's a goal. What are you talking about? Paying rent. Come on, that's <laughs> no hot well, tub uh, work. 
Hot tub brothel work. What a weird like. Hey, let's make a kids movie. What job should we give them? Hot tub, hot tub brothel cleaner. I don't know. Fluffer. It's, I don't know what he. I don't know. I don't know exactly what he was doing there. It's Maslow's hierarchy of needs. He needs food, shelter, love, and belonging before he can self actualize and really, you know, fly right to the end of that film. That's right. Yeah, he's not ducking his responsibilities. You see. Um, so I was kind of on board right up until the diner scene. They, they, you know, they're they're kind of on a. I don't, I don't know what's going on, what's happening with this movie, but I was still kind of entertained. But then they get there, and then um, what's it, Jim Jensen, the the villain? Yeah, uh, he runs the foul of uh, demonic possession. Yeah, Jennings, uh, uh, by played by Jeffrey Jones. Uh, he's just he's so over the top and he's he's transforming into this guy not really I, I always knew him as like the Beetlejuice guy right um and he's just like hamming it up like so much like you can't even like so great, so great. I loved it I, I kind of yeah, loved, loved it I got it I got it you guys loved it it kind of catches our flat footed there but I did like it when he starts doing laser Honestly, eyes, Jack, I swear huh? you written these down do you have a list or something <laughs> I do have a list. And there's like the tongue that comes out later. Just... You guys like that. This is like, this is where like the movie was like, I was losing it. I was on board when he's landing and he's hanging out with Beverly and becoming her manager. And then the, I just felt the villain was really weak. He didn't really have a lot of lines. It's, it was just a lot of like making faces. What? He, he Look, talked a lot. What are you talking about? Jennings just I, I I felt like he didn't have enough to say it didn't really have like a proper I, I, I just wasn't feeling it at all Duck just Boogie really a shell of a character is what you're getting at. like I mean like it's it's pretty fun it's super campy it's over the top like I, I think more of that would have been a lot more fun introducing the villain in the 30 minute mark would have been interesting for me so I know where the movie's going but uh yeah yeah, didn't you find that there was like two movies? There was Ken Howard Get a Job, was like episode one, and then Ken Howard Fight Another Alien was episode two of yeah. this film franchise. Uh, yeah. And that, like, I think that was like, part of the rockiness for the plot because again, the first thirty minutes felt like a different movie than the last, you know, uh, hour long movie. And it was like it's it's pretty cool, but I enjoy all the campy, over the top uh, monster effects, the glowing red. Where his eyes go white and it gets the red aura and just all like the tongue that comes out of course that's awesome brilliant beautiful more tongue more duck boobs would have made this a better movie in my opinion. <laughs> um i i like the claymation at the end um but i, I did it. feel like the the lighting wasn't right on it like it didn't feel like it was uh it wasn't perfect but it, i did like the little monsters and things like that but i i, I did think like the ending was like pretty random like howard just like finds a gun like where did this gun even come from and then he's riding around on a zamboni like where did they weren't they weren't in a hockey rink where like where did this I, it doesn't make any sense to me i don't know i don't know I think, they, I think, try to, they try to do that pan shot that shows the crashed laser gun car as they enter the lab just to like check off you know, Chekhov's laser gun car, I guess, is what they're doing with that. I'm not sure exactly. You know, yeah. I, I didn't I didn't like the way that nothing about Howard's essential duckness. Like, I don't want to ruffle any feathers here, but, like, nothing about Howard's essential duckness came through to beat the villain, right? It was a laser gun that he found cast aside. But he did fly to get there. I think if they had done a battle of the bands against those group of demons at the end of the movie, that would have been way better yeah. for control of the planet. Then Howard would have followed his dream. He would have been a manager. He would have not sold out. I mean, this whole theme of selling out that they just forget about after like the 40 minute mark. We could have wrapped that all up nicely. You wouldn't have needed a uh, laser gun. You could have had an electric guitar. Um, oh, man. Yeah, I would have been on board with like, uh, what about like a Space Jam style basketball game <laughs> for control of the world? No basketball. We got to stay consistent with that Battle of the Bands thing. But on that cage, oh man. Yeah, no, I think you're right. Actually, you're right. You're right. Andrew, do you have anything that you want to add to hating on this movie? 
Uh, the quack foo was stupid. I hate the duck boobs. There was no storyline. There's too many sexual references for a kids' movie. The special effects were by the same company that brought us fucking Star Wars. I mean, that that's pretty bad. That's it. That's my list. That's all I have. <laughs> all right, let's go. Let's get into the skinny and give our grades for this movie. Who wants to start? Uh, Howard the Duck nearly got a double billing, but it failed at the box office. And I think it failed on my second viewing, even. The shimmery glow of nostalgia could not polish it into shining. I'm afraid that this is, I don't, you know, you got to break a few eggs to make an omelet, I guess. But uh, in this case, Howard the Duck gets a, uh, a D from me, I would say. D for duck, you see. D for duck. That's perfect. <laughs> uh, all right, I'll go. I'll go. Um, so C minus for me. Um, I thought it was an interesting setup. But uh, a poorly developed main character with not like really any motivation, over the top characters like Tim Robbins, scientist guy. Uh, I didn't like the villain, but honestly, I'd be down for like a remake. Uh, give this thing to James Gunn and you know make it R rated, and I'm there. Opening night. You know, I uh, I, I like I give I give it a, a C. Um, there's just a length that was bad for me, but I mean, like, it's a duck from outer space. It's stupid. Like, it's a duck from outer space in the 80s. It's got a lot of camp. It's got, you know, a moderate amount of uh, heart, a little bit of cheese. Uh, I would recommend this to people if they're really high late at night, but they may fall asleep halfway through. Um, Should they watch it before or after Buckaroo Bonsai? I love Should Buckaroo. You mix the two. Duckaroo Bonsai. <laughs> Duckaroo Bonsai would be brilliant. Yeah, but uh, yeah, see, like it's just I like I, I I love stupid. I love camp. I think it's great. It just it just felt too long and I kind of got bored on the second viewing. But I would recommend people to watch it. If you haven't seen Howard the Duck, watch it because it's a cultural um I don't know, rite of passage almost. You should watch Howard the Duck. It it doesn't hold up for me and i wouldn't recommend it to anybody ever again to watch this movie and there's a way to do a stupid ass space duck movie um there's definitely a way to pull that off and i think like a james gunn like george said could totally pull that kind of shit off but this this was terrible i i loved it as a kid i remember really enjoying it but this was really hard to rewatch, and i felt very depressed that i i joined this group to do this now because it was it was rough guys uh i gave it a d uh, but I'm giving Greg an A for all his duck puns because they were magical. <laughs> all yes. right, guys. Um, so that's it for another episode of Inside Movies. Um, so you can follow us all. Uh, I've linked all our socials and, and uh, our credits and things like that in the video description uh, below. So give us a follow and come back next week. Uh, we're reviewing uh, The Wolfman. So uh, see you next time, guys. Peace.